Hello everyone, peace of Christ to all. In this video, we are going to answer Abdul who posted something in Facebook. It's already for me really late. Actually, it's morning, but I did not sleep yet because I was working. And uh, I could not resist the temptation really uh, of making one more video before I go to rest. This is Abdul. He is posting those questions in Facebook. And by the way, Abdul, Muslims, when they post questions, they themselves, they never read the questions. They copy paste from each other. Uh, Muslims sometimes they act like bacteria. They are copy paste, copy paste. Nobody even read his Quran. They copy the Quran. They never read the Quran. That's why they read in Arabic, but yet they don't speak Arabic. And that's exactly the problem. <coughs> Read with me the question here, this Abdul he is saying. Actually, uh, I don't know if this is a guy because his name, Khadijat, Khadijat, maybe from Khadija, maybe this is a Pakistani name, coming from the name Khadija, which means a female, I'm not sure. Please, Christians, if you are proud of being a Christians, so answer the simple question. Hmm. First of all, when you say if you are proud to be Christian, well, you know what? Are you proud to be a Muslim? I mean, what, what would make you be proud to be a Muslim before you ask the Christians, are you proud? Is that because you follow a child molester who have sex with a child? Is that because your prophet was accused of a sin and aware? Is that because your prophet, he was a thief? Is, it, is that because he was a caravan rider? Is that because he is receiving satanic verses as the Quran speak to us in the chapter of Al-Hajj? I mean... Or maybe because Allah will make you a, a virgin in the heaven of Allah and will make you a prostitute for everybody to sleep with you in the heaven. And Allah will make the Muslim have an endless penis, a penis and he will make your vagina fit for that. And I, I, I don't know how a Muslim speak about who is proud, who is not. Can you be proud yourself? You better be. Same time when you ask the Christians about being proud, well, look here, your God, <laughs> or the made-up God, he said to the Christians things which is really weird. As an example, in chapter 2, verse number uh, 62, your God is proud of the Christians, and he promised them they would go to heaven. <laughs> you know, the Muslim, they will say to you, all oh, those are the Christians who follow the true religion of Jesus, Isa. Hold on, hold on, Edith Abdul. If this is true, he is speaking to the people who they are in the time of Muhammad, who they are Christians, not Muslims. And he's speaking to the Jews who they are in the time of Muhammad, they are Jews, not Muslims, in the time of Muhammad. Because remember, the Quran is not a message sent for those who die, it's a message sent for those who they are alive at that time and for the future supposedly so how your god he do say and he promised the christians and the jews that they will go to heaven unless he is proud of them don't tell me he is so upset and not proud but yet they will go to heaven right <laughs> this god is very weird i mean seriously this god he need a clinic Sometimes when he want, he is proud. When he don't want, he is not proud. Sometimes he want to send him to heaven. But let me tell you why. Muhammad in the beginning, as a hypocrite man, scumbag, he was trying to show the Christians that he is not against them. So maybe they will accept him. And he was trying to do the same with the Jews. Maybe they will accept him. And he was trying to do with the Sabians. Actually, he told the Sabians, I am a Sabians. Muhammad is the same as Obama. You know Obama? Obama, before the election, he went to Israel and he wore the Jewish hat. He went to the Muslims and he convinced them that he is a Muslim. Remember, his name is Muhammad Hussein Obama. And they do not need to be convinced. He is born from a Muslim father. And he went to the Christians and he prayed in their churches and he is a Christian. But the fact, he is a scumbag. So here in this verse, Muhammad is Christian and he is a Jew and he is a Sabian. And the funny, he promised even the Sabians they would go to heaven. Actually, Muhammad was considered as a Sabian by the people of his time because he claimed to be a Sabian. If we take right now and search for the Hadith, you know, uh, if we search here for the word Sabian, 
you will see that everybody in the Arabian Peninsula used to call Muhammad Sabian. You see? Do you see it? Anyone who convert to Islam, people, they call him Sabian. Sabian. Did you become a Sabian like Muhammad? Why they were confused about Muhammad and the Sabians? Because Muhammad in the beginning of his lifetime, uh, he claimed to be a Sabian. And actually he took a lot of things from the Sabians too. Uh, like uh, the way he washed, many things. You know, we make many videos about it. So, uh, Muhammad as a Sabi, reported many times in the Hadith, even when Muhammad, he sent his people to, to find some water, as you see here in the story. I'm just, those things, they just come to my mind, so I'm, I'm showing you. Uh, you see here, he ordered, Muhammad, he ordered some, some uh, of his men to find water, and then they met a woman who is, was sitting in a camel between the two bags, etc. And then they said to her, where do you find this water? She replied, well, I was in that place, etc., etc. And then they requested her to come with them. She asked, where? They said, to Allah Messenger. To Allah Messenger. Let me move the page a little bit so you can see it. And then she said, Do you mean the man who is a Sabi? Sabi is a singular name of Sabian, which means a Sabi. You know, like when you say uh, Jewish, you say a Jew. So Sabi is a, for one man who is a Sabian. He is from the, the religion of the Sabian. So she said, Is he the Sabi huh? with the new religion? They said, yes, the same person. Look, they did not say he is not a Sabi. Right? In the other hadith, when they ask a guy, a normal guy, did you become a Sabi? He said, no, I became embrace, embrace Islam. Here they are confirming that Muhammad is Sabi. <laughs> anyway, so if we go back, a little bit to the to the verse in the Quran. Uh, we will see the following. Let us go back to the verse in the Quran. The Muslim he was asking, remember, can you show me where Jesus' name was mentioned in the Old Testament? That God has a son. I want to ask the Muslims. I want to make a challenge to the Muslims. Can you show me where we can find that the Jews in their book they call the Uzair the son of Allah? First of all, not even one Jew believe in Allah. Number two, there's nobody in the Old Testament. His name is Uzair, and he was considered the son of Allah. So you, Abdul, look at this disaster. You Muslims, you accuse the Jews and the Christian, they change the Bible, and they make Jesus son of God, and they make Uzair son of God. And then we don't find any Uzair in the Old Testament, he is a son of God. So who is the scumbag here? Are you telling me those people, they change their book and their religion to believe in a son of God, but there is no son of God? Because if there is a son of God, as you are saying, it should be, in the Old Testament, remember, this is the question of the Abdul. I'm not, that's not my question. The Abdul is asking question. Abdul is being smart. He is saying, do we have, there is a verses in the Old Testament mentioned that there is, you know, uh, Jesus Christ, he is going to be son of God. My friend, where we can find Uzair in the Old Testament? If you are asking me, just to show you the hypocrisy of the Abdul. If you're asking me for a proof from the Old Testament, do you believe in the Old Testament anyway? 
In the Old Testament, there is more than 350 prophecies speak about Jesus coming. You can go right now and search on Google. Actually, I did not work for it. I just searched, you know. It says 353. Actually, I believe there's more. But I will go with this. And a long list. Now, even the names, which is because Jesus have many names, my friend. And those, you don't, the Muslims, the problem, do not know even what Jesus means. There's no names in the Bible. The Bible is not the book of names. There's a video. You can go right now and search for secret code hide in the book of Genesis. And you will see how the secret code, which is not really a secret code, but it is a code for us because most of us, we are ignorant. You will see even the names of Adam all the way to Noah, the children of Adam all the way to Noah, even the names predicting and prophesying of the coming Messiah. But yet the Abdul, he cannot see that. 355 prophecy in this page alone about Jesus. And yet the Abdul is asking for a proof. And we cannot find one prophecy about Muhammad, and yet the Quran says that the Christian and the Jews are believers. And then the Muslims, they say to you, no, 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 we have a prophecy about Muhammad. We do. Where we can find that? They will say to you, here we go. If we go to the Quran, we will see that the Quran says that there is in the gospel, there is Jesus, he said, there is a prophet will come after me. His name is Ahmad. His name is what? Ahmad. Hold on. First of all, Ahmad is not the same as Muhammad. It's a different thing. The Muslim, they say to you, it, you know, it has the same meaning. Actually, no, it's not the same meaning. Same time, a name is a name. Either his name is Ahmad or his name is Muhammad. But look what the problem here we have. The Muslim Abdul, the smart one, like he did that. As I said, Muslims are copy-paste. Didat told them that he found the name of Muhammad in the Song of Songs. Muhammadim, Muhammadim, you know, which is have nothing to do with the name of Muhammad. The name of Muhammad actually is Qatham. And you know, Qatham have many meaning from the damaged food or damage, etc. Even to the sperm of the hyena. Or let us say to the hyena who piss a lot. So, Ahmad is the name mentioned in the Quran only one prophecy about Muhammad mentioned in the Quran, not in the Bible. And the Quran says in chapter 61, verse number 6, as you see in the front of your eyes, huh, that the one who said that verse is Jesus. Is who? Is Jesus. But here we have a problem. How come the Muslims could not find that prophecy in the New Testament, but they found it in the Old Testament? And I will tell you what that problem means. That means the stupid ones who come with the conclusion that the name of Muhammad exists in the Old Testament, he is contradicting his Quran, for his Quran never mentioned that Muhammad exists in the Old Testament. There is only one person mentioned the name of Muhammad and exists, supposedly, should be exist in the New Testament, and that is Jesus. But yet the Muslims, they show us the name. Remember, this is the name, his name. Look, you see, it says, someone he will come after me. Huh? His name is Ahmad. So he named him. It's not like he described him or, you know, no, no. He named him by the name. So it's very stupid of the Muslims to ask those questions. Same time, if the Christians, they have someone, his name is Ahmad. How come Muhammad in the time of Jesus, followers who are the, around him supposedly, he did not show them the verse from the Bible? He did not show them the verse from the Bible. Why? Is it there? It should be there. If the Muslim they want to say the Christians they took it off, that will make their prophet a scam back again. Why? Because Muhammad he took an oath. Uh, let me see if I can find find the verse, hmm, uh, the hadith. Uh, 
This is the hadith in the front of us. Muhammad, he is taking an oath by the Old Testament. Uh, now, what this hadith proved to us regarding this issue, that Muhammad, when he took the oath, he is simply saying it clearly that I believe in this book. Let us make it more clear. I believe in this book. And by the way, this is Hassan. This is Sahih Hadith. This is not a bad Hadith. I will make it smaller so you guys can see more of the text. I think it's clear already. All right. And just to show you that it is Hassan, you know, and we will make it smaller more and more. Let us see. Here we go. You see? So Muslim cannot say this is Daif. This is a fat Hadith. You know, they always they say Hadith, fat, skinny, and etc. And by the way, even the Daif one is a good one for the, for ignorant stupid who do not know. You can go and search right now for the videos made by Sheikh Hamza. He explained to the idiot ones of the Muslims that a Daif Hadith is okay. It pass. All right? So look what your prophet, the prophet of the Abdul, he doing here. If you want to tell me that our Bible is corrupted, then how your prophet, the prophet, the highest authority of the Abdul in the world. Remember, this is the biggest Abdul. This is not a small Abdul. There's a fat Abdul, small Abdul, big Abdul, a skinny Abdul. There's all kinds of Abdul. This is the biggest Abdul in the history of Muslims. He is really so big. All right? I will take the things here so you guys can see with me. And nothing can bother you in the way. All right, here we go. We have full screen. If you read with me here, <clears throat> in this uh, issue here, you will see Muhammad, he put his hand on the Torah, and he said, I believe in thee and the one who revealed thee. Muslims, there's one of two choices. Either your prophet is a scumbag, he is taking a false oath in a false book, or your prophet is a scumbag taking an oath in a book he don't believe in. Which one you choose? Because if the book in the time of the of time of Muhammad is corrupt, then how your prophet he do such a such a, such a crazy thing, taking an oath by a book which is not supposedly approved. You know, when somebody takes an oath by a book he don't believe in, obviously he is a liar. So Muhammad, he would draw the caution. He told them, bring me the Torah. He said, who said that? Muhammad, the child molester. Bring me the Torah. By the way, I'm not insulting, but please don't, don't take me wrong, brothers. Muslim brothers, don't take me wrong. I'm not insulting your prophet. He is a child molester. I'm just stating a fact. If your prophet arrived to any New York airport or any airport in the USA and he have a wife with him, she is seven years old or six years old, he will be arrested immediately. All right? We have a congressman. He is in jail right now just because he sent his picture or the picture of his whiner to a 15 years old. Your prophet, he have a wife. She is six years old. So he is a child molester. So look, the child molester, he said, Bring me, <clears throat> bring me the Torah. And then he placed, placed the Torah in a pillow he used to sit in. Which means Muhammad is in the front of the Jews. is being a lot, very much careful about being hypocrite to the Jews. He's showing too much respect to the Torah. And by the way, the Torah at that time is not the same as a book today. You see, the Jews always, they have it like a scroll. You know, they open it up. So, and then they, they brought for him the Torah. And they place it on the, uh, the, the the cushion. And then Muhammad, he is taking an oath. He said, I believe on in thee and in the one or him who revealed thee. This is mean the name of Uzair must be in the Torah at that time. 
But Muhammad, he failed to show them the name of Uzair. <laughs> Where is Uzair? <laughs> he failed to show the Christians his name in the New Testament. Where is, where is Ahmad? <laughs> now, just to make this video short, because really I'm getting tired. It was a long night. Uh, not because, you know, for sure, I, I don't have four wives like Muhammad or 13 wives or 17 uh, sex slaves like uh, uh, the sheik, the, the sheikhs of Islam. Uh, but, uh, you know, I was doing, working, hard working and studying at the same time because, you know, knowledge never ends. Uh, the question, the second question here by this Abdul here, uh, he's asking for verses. We just showed you they have, there's tons of verses in the Bible. Here we go. I will post the link here under, under the video so people, they can see the list of prophecy about about the Messiah. All those. Imagine. The Muslims, they were dancing for finding the, mo the word Muhammadim in the Old Testament. <laughs> Imagine all of this. Oh, look, look. All right. You see? All of this. All of this. Is a prophet prophes, prophesying about Jesus? All right, you see, I'm just screwing down all of this. Uh huh. That's enough. Otherwise, you Abdul, you might get dizzy, and then Allah will, will cannot they cannot save you. You know, Muhammad he died because of poison, and the Muslim did not bury him for three days, hoping that something will happen, a miracle will happen. Uh, so my challenge to the Muslims: where we can find Uzair? Especially your prophet, he approved the book, the Torah, and he swore by it, and he took an oath on it. And same time, when he took an oath on it, there is a verses in that book. It says, Uzair is the son of Allah." <laughs> so how he take a, how he take an oath on that book then? And he say, "I believe in thee." You see, he didn't say, "I believe in a verse." He said, "Bring the Torah, bring the Torah." And he took an oath on the Torah. Obviously, your prophet is a scumbag. Secondly, they talk about Jesus being a man. I talk about that many times. How Jesus can be the can be God and he is man and etc. You know, Abdul, the question should be given to you. Your God is the man. If we go right now and we search in the Quran, we will find that your God, Allah, at, at the end of the time, he will send, he will, sorry, he will show his leg. Chapter 68, verse number 42. Some Abdul, they try to fool you. They say, this is not a leg. Allah will not show, a le show, you know, show his leg. This is about war. The old time, the Arab, they say, Yakshifu Ansaq means it's a war. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. You cannot play. It says it clearly, the shin will le be laid bare. How we can prove that? We go to the hadith. Don't tell me you know more than your prophet. I mean, come on. This is the biggest scumbag ever. He is going to explain to you what the Quran is saying and what he meant. And don't tell me you know more than your prophet. Remember, Muhammad, he have a BHD, UF, UF? Yeah, UFO. UFO, unknown sources of BHD, about things nobody heard before. So he know better than you for sure. You have to accept whatever the prophet he say. So look what the prophet he says about the leg of Allah. First of all, in uh, Sahih al-Bukhari, your prophet, he come from, I'm not going to show you tons of reference, just because the video is getting longer. And people don't like a long video, what I can do. You know, I don't know what to do, really. I, I, I'm trying to make it really short, but as you see. The prophet said, the people will be thrown in the hellfire, etc. And then at the end, Allah, he will put his foot over it. Over what? Over the fire. All right. And it will say, cut, cut. <laughs> Which in Arabic, cut, cut, as you see here. So, your God Allah is not a human. But he has feet, he has hands. We can show you he has fingers, he has ten fingers. You know, like your, a God, he has ten fingers. 
I mean, how seriously? Why he have ten fingers? What he's going to do with them? One for the boogers. Uh, one to clean. I don't know. Like you tell me. Why Allah? You know, when somebody says fingers, the, the funny, the Muslims, they say to you, there's a verse in the Quran. It says that nothing is the same or the likeness of Allah. Nothing is the likeness of Allah. But in the same time, we find that Allah, he is describing himself Uh, he described himself that he is uh, he have a foot let us see oh boy anyway so the verse says Allah have nobody is have the likeness of Allah and then Allah he described that he have a foot and Allah he have uh, 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 you know uh, 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 you know, hands and you have a finger. And by the way, here, chapter 10, verse number 38, Allah, he says, uh, he challenged the people to bring Quran like his. And if you remember, we have a chapter in the Quran, it's called the Satanic Verses chapter, a chapter of Al-Hajj, where, sh where Shaitan, he gave Muhammad Quran and even Muhammad did not notice. How he challenged Muslims and, and non-Muslims to make Quran better than this Quran, when he's a prophet, he received Quran from the devil. And not to mention the Quran of Ibn Sarah, where Muhammad was copying from him and he was correcting his Quran. So this guy, he left Islam because if he said to himself, well, if Muhammad, he take my words and he make it Quran, well, it was inspired to me, the same as inspired to him. And not to forget to mention Umar al-Khattab, he made Quran and Muhammad, God, copy Umar ibn al-Khattab in three occasions at least. Actually, I can show you in different hadith, it says that they copy from him at least five to six occasions. Copy exactly. Uh, uh, and the funny here, he says, if you can make Quran, bring 10 verses like this. This is a chapter 11, you know, unbelievable. So Allah has, Allah has fingers, Allah has uh, 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 a foot, Allah have legs, etc. And yet the Muslim, they say to us, Allah, nothing is the same or the likeness of Allah. There's nothing. In the same time, the funny, just to show you here, uh, Muhammad, he described Allah. If you remember, they asked Muhammad, are we going to see Allah in the judgment day? Are we going to see? All right. They said to him, O Allah Messenger, are we going to see our Lord in the day of resurrection? He said, do you uh, crowd and uh, squeeze each other on looking at the sun when it was not hiding in the, about the cloud? So, actually the translation is funny. But anyway, uh, so he's saying he could confirm, for sure you will see Allah. But how they will see Allah? We go down, we will find the, how they will see Allah. Allah will come to them in a shape other than the shape which they knew. So Allah what? Allah have shape. And he changed his shape. Other than the one which he, they knew or they saw first time. And when he come to them, they will say to him, you are not Allah. They will kick his ass. So Allah will go to his closet and he changed his shape. And then he will come to them. And imagine first time when he come, they will say to him, we seek refuge from you, brother. You are not Allah, which means they consider him shaitan. And they will not follow him. And Allah then, he will go. He is very disappointed. All right. And now he will come to them in the shape which they saw first time. Like what? Actually, they trans the translation. The, the translation, it says the one they saw first time. Then it says Allah will come to us and we will recognize him. Then Allah will come to them in a shape which they know. And they will say, he will say, I am your Lord. And then they will say, no doubt you are our Lord. So Muslims reject Allah just because he changed his shape. It's exactly what they are doing to Jesus. They refuse Jesus because he is coming in the shape of a man. He will go, this is your God. Huh? is coming to you and you are accusing him to be the devil. They say to Allah, imagine, they say to Allah, Allah said to them, I am your Lord. 
And then they say to, to him, we seek refuge with Allah from you, which means they consider him the devil, just because he changed his shape. That's what you are doing, you Muslims, with Jesus. You don't like the shape, don't you? You want God to, uh, to, be, to come to you in the way you like. What is the shape you like? Which is very funny here, by the way, because Allah, he come to them in a shape which they knew. What is that? What is that? Ah, let us see. A few lying down, we will notice what is that. That is the leg. Hmm? Uh, actually, in this hadith, it doesn't show really the leg. Where is the sock? Let us see. Uh, does it have shin? No, this one doesn't have shin. Uh, yeah, well, let me show you the other hadith where it's speaking about the shin. All right. All right, all right. Let us search for it, no problem. Yakshifu uh, ansaq. Yakshifu. Let us see. Here we go. The first hadith in the top. So Allah will bring from the north, etc., 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 and then Yakshifu uh, Rabbuna An Saqihi. Where is the Saq? Where is the Shin? Let us see. You see the translation? I don't, I don't believe it. The translation is really bad. Uh, themselves before him, and then etc. Where is the Shin? Allah bring forth the service tower. You see, they, they did not change it, translate the word saqahu as a shin, they translate it as severe, severest hour, which is false translation. Let me show you how we, we can this is how we can expose them. Hold on, hold on. The same statement will appear again and they will translate it as a leg. All right, here we go. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Let us see this one. <laughs> it's endless, you know. Those Muslims, unbelievable. You see, guys, look. The same statement there, they say it, it's severe hour. They did not say saq. They did not translate the saq. Yawma yakshifu an saqin. Look with the translation. When the shank, the shank would be uncovered. What is the shank of Allah, Muslims? <laughs> it must be a holy shank. Allah have a shank? What does that mean? Why Allah will, will, will uncover his shank? Do you see it? This is not my translation, and this is Sahih Muslim. And the hadith number is in the front of you. So when the Quran speaks, Allah is going to show his shin, as we showed you in the Quran here. This is a real shin. And we expose the truth in the hadith in the front of you. That Allah, he have a shin, and he have a hand, and he have a face. And actually, I have a debate with two Muslim scholars, the head of the Islamic Center of Tennessee, you can go watch it, the Dr. Nabil Bayakli and the Imam of the Mosque of, of the Tennessee, uh, his name Malik Sar, and they agree that Allah, yes, have a physical being, and he have a shin, he have a, he have a leg, he have a hand. But look what they say to me. But Christian Prince, the leg of Allah is not like your leg. I don't want him to have my leg, man. Who care? Maybe he's a spider. This is not the problem. Your God, Allah, is a physical being. And they agree. And they said, yes, he's a physical being. But Allah's part is nothing like it. This is not the problem now. Why Allah have a part? You see, when we say Jesus, he came to us in the image of a man. Because he is walking between us as a man. As simple as that. Allah, he have a shin for what? He plays soccer, football, 
What he do? He play karate with Bruce Lee? Shin is a part you use to, to do things with it. When we say a foot, it means something we stand on, as we saw in the hadith. You see? Allah will put his foot over it. Why Allah have a foot? Can't he fly? You see, all the description of Allah, you will not find one place they are saying that Allah have wings. And not only that. Just one more thing. I will finish the video because it's getting longer. Muhammad himself, he described Allah as a fat, short man. And we spoke about this many times, but it is, you know, just to add for those who maybe first time they are seeing this. And as you see, Muslim, this is Sahih. This is what? This is Sahih. Muhammad, he said to the Muslims, don't be confused between Allah and the false Messiah. Hold on, the Dajjal, the Antichrist. The Antichrist, he will come as a man. Why the Muslim, they will be confused between, between the Antichrist, who is a man, and Allah? I mean, what is the what is the chance of confusion? If I am a man, huh, and he is God, and he is not a man, why people will be confused between my look and Allah look, unless Allah have the same look? So look what he said. Uh, I have told you much about the Dajjal, Antichrist, etc., that I am afraid you might not understand. So why you are telling them if you they won't understand? The Antichrist is short, uh, hinted, uh, woolly her, her, the one eye, the one eye slight, slight etc. So he's describing the fat guy, the short guy who have a curly hair. He have a problem with the with the with the uh, eye, and then he said to them, "So if you are confused about him, know that your Allah is not one-eyed." What? He's he's describing a fat, short man. And the only difference between him and Allah is the, the eye? So your God is the man? You see, this story here, to be accurate, should be comparing between the true Messiah and the false Messiah. Not between the false Messiah and Allah. But Muhammad is not comparing between the false Messiah and the Messiah. He's comparing between the Messiah, which is the false one, and Allah, and the only difference between the two descriptions, which is description of a man, perfect man as you see, hair, eyes, etc. The only difference that Allah is not one eye, so Allah have two eyes. And his both eyes are fine. The other guy, his eye is damaged. So who is the man here? So Abdul, for the sake of uh, the fig, you know, your God, he swear by the fig, right? I want you, before you ask, ask us the Christians the questions, I want you to say, I swear by fig, I challenge any Christian to answer this question. And then, maybe we will answer you, and we will say to you, will we swear by the watermelon, that watermelon is in risk when it is in the hand of a Muslim. Because remember, there's a fatwa, that Muslims, they can have sex with watermelon by making a hole in it. I mean, what kind of silly religion and what kind of a stupid religion you Muslims follow? You make us sick, your God is sick, and this is a religion of stupidity. And they assume, the Muslim, they assume that you Christians are ignorant. Therefore, we can fool you, we can lie to you, we can say whatever we want, and we can get away with it because you are not educated. Not anymore, my friends. Those people, they know a lot about Islam. A child who watch my video, he can refute your God big time. Big time. And you Muslims cannot answer. With this, I want to say thank you for listening. Don't forget, if you like to, to, uh, to read more, uh, you can read my books, The Deception of Allah and Quran and Science and Depth. Those two books, they complete each other. I advise everybody to have it. And we have the French book, which is called the secret to Prophet Arab for those who speak French in French countries. And soon we will have our new books is going to be in Swedish and in German to be published. And we are working in that to make it happen soon. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. I mean to that. Thank you.